For the Atrex project, we needed to determine what was required from the instrument side of things for them to be uh, installed on the aircraft. And then also from the aircraft side of things, we had to figure out uh, and coordinate all the requirements from the science side of things. So we had to identify requirements from both sides and, and match them up and make sure they were all satisfied such that when the instrument teams showed up, everything was ready to allow them to be installed on the aircraft. When you want to integrate an instrument on an aircraft that, that hasn't been on the aircraft before, you have to determine everything from the size of the instrument so you know how much space it's going to occupy or needs to occupy in the aircraft. You know how much, how much the instrument weighs so you can be sure that what you design mechanically for installing the instrument on the aircraft uh, is of sufficient strength to be able to hold the instrument in the aircraft uh, through a number of uh, design requirements such as uh, G loads and, and gust loads on the aircraft and then you have to ensure that the electrical interfaces between the aircraft and, and the instrument will match up and, and the instrument will have what it needs to operate electrically and also what the aircraft needs from its side to ensure that the communication with the aircraft and the ground uh, works properly. From the time we first start communicating with the instruments teams and, until we're ready to actually start performing science with all the instruments on the aircraft, it takes about a year and a half of, of really hard work, close coordination, and uh, a lot of good communication between everybody. Uh, we have to work with the, the State Department and we have to go through the Office of Interagency and International Relations at NASA headquarters. Uh, we have to work through the State Department to work with the country that we intend to go to. We have to work on a, a lower level with uh, the host airfield to make sure that they have all the requirements uh, we need and when, when they don't have there, we, we'll have to bring with us. Uh, we have to find adequate lodging for 50 to 60 people. Uh, we have to arrange for rental cars and uh, airlines and, and a whole host of things. And Trapper, can I get a takeoff report? Yes, sir. Runway is clear. You're going for takeoff. Watch that. My purpose when we get to the uh, point of actually flying science is that I need to act as the liaison or the interface between the aircraft crew and the scientists make sure that all the scientist requirements are known by the aircraft crew and vice versa because there are a lot of things that uh, need to happen prior to the aircraft taking off for a science flight uh, in order for the, the instruments to, to function properly throughout the whole flight. During the science flights I ensure with the scientists that their instruments are operating uh, properly and correctly and I relay that information to those that are operating the aircraft itself and during the flights when we do vertical profile maneuvers from going from high altitude to low and, and vice versa, uh, some of our instruments need to be turned off at certain points and, and turned on at other points and I coordinate uh, all that, that activity between the science team and the aircraft operations team. Most people, I think, when they, when they think about NASA, they think about uh, space exploration. Uh, but I don't think a lot of people really realize that NASA is quite heavily involved in airborne science research as well to study uh, the systems that are here and affect us on Earth. Airborne science is actually uh, quite an important aspect of what NASA does. We're discovering uh, interesting things and with those discoveries we could perhaps improve things uh, for life here on Earth. Got control panel, secure the aircraft to shore. Roger, thanks for your help. We'll start our communications. NASA 872. NASA 872.